Barry Stein, the, a contributing editor at City Journal and the author of a very funny new book that I have here titled, No Matter What They Call It, No Matter What, They'll Call This Book Racist. Welcome, Mr. Stein. Uh, thanks, Jason. Um, Let's talk about that, that title that I fumbled over there. Um, where does it come from? I'm surprised you called it funny. I just had an interview with a guy who clearly hated me who called it uh, vicious and petty. Um, but the, um, it came, actually, you know, I, was, I really struggled over the title. Uh, and every one, I thought I came up with some pretty good ones. And then I, I thought, you know, the left is, is liberals, leftists are going to find a way to twist this into accuse me of, accusing me of being a racist. And finally, I just gave up and threw up my hands and, and took that, uh, I stole it from that uh, famous Tea Party sign, yeah. where a guy held up a sign at the Tea Party rally, said it doesn't matter what the sign says, they're going to, to yeah. accuse me of being racist. And, um, and I, I actually came to like it. It is unwieldy, as, as you, as you <laughs> say. But, um, <laughs> you know, part of what I, what I hope it does is um, kind of, the, the word is, racist is used so irresponsibly, right. uh, tossed around so recklessly, that uh, I wanted to get it out there as part of the title and, and let people try to do that. Well, let me ask you about that. It's, it's, it's in the largest uh, print and on, on the cover, uh, the word racist. Does it still pack the punch that it used to, or has it been used so indiscriminately, um, so recklessly? Um, and, and I wouldn't have a lot of experience with this, but when a black person calls a white person racist, has it lost some of its sting? No, black conservatives are just called race traitors, nor is all the rest. <laughs> um, I think it, it has, I mean, which is, which is unfortunate, mm -hmm. because it's a word which means something. Yeah. But the meaning has been so dissipated through overuse. Um, that uh, unfortunately it has. It's a shame. It's a, it's, a, it's a word that should either be reclaimed for its original meaning or it should go the way that uh, you know, gays did with queer yeah. and, uh, and yeah. lose its meaning. Well, there's, a, there's a lot of provocative stuff in here. Uh, what are you hoping people take away from it? Are you trying to get a conversation started that you think this country needs to have? It's exactly that. I think we need you know, people like Eric Holder and before him Bill Clinton uh, uh, said uh, we needed a con national conversation right. on race. They, I think, wanted the liberal conversation, which uh -huh. essentially ascribed uh, the most persistent problems of, of black inner cities to white racism. Uh -huh. I think that's a totally dishonest and false conversation. I think we need a genuine conversation which addresses culture and many other things. A lot of things Bill Cosby raised, actually. Uh -huh. okay. Not being afraid of that conversation, uh, and ironically, um, although liberals or call people racist for trying to have it. I think it's conservatives who tend to be more, more frightened of that conversation. So it's not that we don't talk about race enough, it's how we talk about it that you're troubled by. Exactly right. I, I think, look, it is the racial divide in this country, as we've seen lately mm -hmm. again, is our most uh, d depressing and persistent problem. And it's not going to be addressed until we talk honestly about all kinds of issues involving race. How has the election of Obama altered this conversation? Or, or how, well, let me leave it there. I think not in the ways that we hoped. Okay. Uh, you know, we a lot of people felt very good about the election of Obama. Right. Even a lot of us who opposed Obama on the basis of policy had high hopes for what his election would mean. It hasn't meant that. I think it hasn't for a number of reasons, partly because he and particularly members of his administration, like Eric Holder, right have exacerbated it by, by ascribing racism to criticism of Obama. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, I, someone asked me the other day what would have happened if Colin Powell had been yeah. our first black yeah. president instead. I think it would have been a lot better. Hmm. Uh, I think uh, a black conservative would have had a great deal more success in actually diffusing this issue. Okay. Well. I guess that's, I think you make a good point there because there is so much of a racial politics taking place on the left today that um, I don't think you see on the right in America. Or there's more of an effort on the, on the, on the, in the right to get past that. Absolutely. On the left, they still see it as a way to, to drum up uh, support among the electorate. Right. Uh, often sincerely and often cynically. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Herman Cain campaign was very interesting in this regard. Uh, people like Janine Garofalo on the left, most notably, who's a, I won't characterize her, you can characterize her yourself, but claimed that uh, your white support, white conservative support for, for uh, Cain was motivated by 
white racist wanting to uh, be, uh, you know, lose that lose that label. In fact, I know a lot of people who are very excited about the Kane campaign. A lot of white people yeah. are very excited. And I never once heard them refer to race. Yeah, it's, it's mm. interesting. Kane so disrupted the left's narrative on, on, on race in America. Right. Not only about the Tea Party, but about conservatives in general. Absolutely. What's this black guy doing rising in the polls like this? It's yeah. not supposed to happen. Exactly. And, and he articulated more at that moment mm. more successfully than any other candidate really the, the traditional American virtues, uh, free yeah. enterprise, all the things that really got people excited about it.